Hello, we're here today talking to Norman Baker MP. It's myself, Richard and Barbara. We are talking about the Battle of Lewis, um, which is a project which is connected with the Sussex Archaeological Society. And Norman Baker is going to talk to us today about two particular uh, areas in relation to the Battle of Lewis. Uh, welcome, Norman. Thank you very much. What does the Battle of Lewis mean to you, Norman? Uh, well, I mean, what it means to me is the, the, the first moment crossing the Rubicon when the automatic power of an unelected monarch yes. was limited. And the, the principle established that for the first time, someone other than the monarch could have a say in the way the country was run. Well, so no, so no, that's, no. that's important. And we've also got, of course, Tom Paine, yes. and we've got all the other stuff that goes on in Lewis, right the way through to uh, the people power that changed the, the, the decision at the Lewis Arms to whether Harvest was stopped there, <laughs> you know, and Bonfire, of course. So that's what it means to me. It's, it's that first key step to, to challenge that principle that established for so many years, hundreds of years, that the king was uh, the only person, God-given right, of course, they believed the, the, the rights from God uh, to, to run the country in the way they wanted, and that was challenged successfully, and that's, that's the importance of the Battle of Lewis to me. Norman, is political representation therefore worth fighting for? Absolutely, because if you have a democracy where people have an opportunity to elect those who represent them, then everybody has a stake in society, and therefore they're more likely to accept decisions which their elected representatives take because uh, they've chosen them and they can get rid of them in due course. Uh, on the other hand, if you have a society which is run traditionally by a monarch, an autocrat, uh, or in some way people feel excluded from, then they have no stake in that society and behave accordingly and they tend to resort to violence and other means to try to influence the outcome of decisions. So democracy is a civilising influence as well as being morally correct. It's taken us a long time, as you say, because the Battle of Lewis, which it's 1264, mm -hmm. uh, 750 years ago, uh, near enough. Um, we have still haven't got proper democracy, really, because I think we need to go further than we've gone. We need to look at, for example, the voting age, whether it should be reduced to 16. We need to look at representative democracy in our own areas, to whether or not people can have more influence on decisions, uh, perhaps in re local referenda, on what happens in their own local patch. But we've come a long, long way um, since 1264, and I'm very proud to be a Member of Parliament for the seat where the English Parliament came out of Lewis, in a sense, had it not been for Simon de Montfort and the, and the battle against the, the monarch at the time, we wouldn't have had the concession that uh, automatic uh, hereditary uh, kingdoms carry on with no influence from any of the outside the person who happens to be in the next in line to the throne. So that principle was established by the Battle of Lewis. The first English Parliament was established in 1265, shortly afterwards, and from then it's been a long old haul right the way through the Reformation, through the uh, 1832 Reform Bill, through the suffragette movement in the early 20th century, um, until we've now got something which, which um, is fair, on paper at least, in terms of representative democracy. Norman, tell me please, what drives you? What drives me in my public life is, is a, a passionate belief in justice. I hate injustice and all those manifestations, injustice whether it's because of discrimination or prejudice, or injustice because of just real politique. I mean, the way the Chinese have treated the Tibetans, for example, it's just uh, frankly appalls me and got me involved in that. So I'm now president of the Tibet Society. Yes. Um, and some of the stuff that's happened in the last 10 years has frankly appalled me. The idea someone can be arrested outside the Senate for reading out the names of British soldiers who died in Iraq just is absolutely unacceptable. And that's everything that's wrong with, with uh, well, I don't want to be too political about it, but that had to be stopped, that sort of that sort of result into almost a police state, frankly, in terms of how people were really treated. So that drives me. Also, environmentalism drives me. It's why I joined, got involved in politics in the first place, to make sure that we recognise that we are, in a sort of Gaia way, all part of the same living organism, and uh, what happens in the fields and to the animals and to the plants affects us as human beings as well. We're not divorced from it. We're all connected. And then if you believe that, then you... Uh, you look at how we deal with the natural world, and it's far from satisfactory. But I do believe, without being too uh, apocalyptic about it, that we are in a you know, very serious situation in terms of climate change, which has to lead to significant changes in the way we approach our life. And I've been saying that for 20 years, as a matter of fact. 
we're finally taking steps, but I always fear we're 10 years behind where we should be in terms of that action. So those two things, of anything, drive me. Norman Baker, thank you very much indeed for your contribution. It's very much appreciated. Thank you for uh, letting us use your office in the interview. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you.